What a miserable night last night was. I'm sure you can hear that wind. Freezing cold and that wind just made it worse. Uh, I was able to stay decently warm, <laughs> wore everything. I'm sure you can see it. Uh, wrap myself uh, in my bag like a cocoon, covering my face, my head, everything from head to toe. Uh, so I made it through. Um, that window is bitter, and this isn't even the cold night. Tomorrow night's the cold night, or tonight, I should say. Oh, man. Whew, I don't like cold very well. But uh, going to start tearing stuff down and get on the trail. So that was about the quickest I've ever taken my tent down. <laughs> I'm all set up and ready to go. So going to hit the trail and get this body warmed up with the blood flowing because I have everything on. <laughs> everything. I'm even wearing my pillow. <laughs> my puffy is my pillow. Uh, whoo. What a night. My hands are frozen even trying to get everything put away. And of course, when your hands are frozen, nothing cooperates. And then you're like, rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> good thing nobody's around here. They think I'm crazy. But I'm going to hit the trail and start warming up and uh, get some miles under me. So let's do it. Uh, a couple miles in this morning, starting to warm up a little bit. Had two pairs of gloves on just to uh, take care of that uh, driving pain of cold in the fingers. <laughs> I've always had pretty bad circulation in my toes and fingers, so they get cold really quick. And uh, when it gets really cold like it was this morning, and then trying to take your tent down and grabbing those poles and everything that's already cold... Yeah, definitely, definitely some stinging pain in the fingers, so had a couple pairs of gloves on, haven't really been able to take the camera out for too many shots uh, without taking gloves on and off, and starting to warm up a little bit now, so I was able to uh, pull the camera out and kind of give you an update. Uh, I think it's about eight or nine miles to get back to the junction where Uncle Johnny's hostel is. And then I'm going to be going past that, obviously, because I already stayed there. Uh, I don't know, to Indian Grave Gap. Uh, there might be another gap past that, I don't know. Just have to see, I think. I don't know, because I'm out in the middle of nowhere with no signal. <laughs> but I think the time changed last night. So, might have an extra hour of daylight today. Tomorrow's supposed to be extremely cold and rainy and possibly freezing rain and snow. So I need to, uh, once I get a signal, kind of check that weather out because I might have to shelter somewhere for that. Because there is no way I'm staying in a tent through that. After last night and how bitterly cold that was, it's kind of my breaking point. I was telling my fiance a couple days ago that I think I found my kryptonite. Didn't deal with this too much on the PCT because it would get really extremely windy, but it's always seemed to be somewhat warm when it was windy or, you know, 50 or 60 degrees and, you know, the wind made it 30. <laughs> but last night, definitely freezing. Def I have no idea how much freezing, but the water was frozen this morning. Good thing I had the filter in my pocket in the sleeping bag so that it didn't freeze because that pretty much ruins a filter and you don't want a ruined filter on the trail for sure. Uh, but yeah, it was bitter cold, just bitter cold last night. That wind, probably 20 to 30 miles per hour, constant, with some pretty big gusts sometimes. Uh, just give me a lot of hip pain and such. Just, yeah, it always happens for some reason. When it's real bitterly cold, my legs get all stiffened up and hurt. And as soon as I start walking in the morning, it's good. But they don't, I don't do good with the cold, but I definitely don't do with, good with the windy cold. 
Uh, that's my kryptonite, I think, is like cold winds and such. Just, uh, yeah, I had had a little weak moment last night. I think that's the first time, first time on uh, on this trail that I'm like, screw this, I'm done. <laughs> Even though I wasn't done, you always think those things, or not always, but those things will come up. I mean, it won't be the last time that my mind says, that's it, I'm done, I quit. I won't quit, unless I do, <laughs> but I'm pretty strong-minded. Uh, but you have to have those weak moments too. Sometimes it's just part of the journey. I got through it. It was a tough one. Definitely cold, but I had all the gear and I was prepared for it to stay warm and safe. But uh, back on trail now, warming up and uh, going to see what we do after we get through uh, the outskirts of Irwin there where Uncle Johnny's hostel is. Kind of skirting by around that and uh, the river and everything. And then a big climb after that once again. Kind of just play it by ear, see how far we get today and... Depending on the weather tomorrow, how far we go. Took my uh, winter snow beanie off. Got some water here. Not much water in the next seven miles, which uh, takes me to the intersection of where Uncle Johnny's is outside of Irwin there. Um, finally eating. Didn't eat this morning, which is weird and rare for me, but I just wanted to get walking. I was so cold. I didn't want, my fingers didn't want to move a bear can lid or open up a Pop-Tart package. Uh, so eating some brown sugar, cinnamon, generic Pop-Tarts. Uh, gotta love this hair, by the way. <laughs> Taking that, that's hat head and bed head, all mixed together. <laughs> Could take this uh, puffy off too, though. Uh, it's obviously going down, so it's gonna get a little warmer. I uh, don't want to sweat too much inside. And, uh, you know, probably do another 10 or so after I uh, get to that intersection. Maybe more than that, just play it by ear. But uh, gonna eat this breakfast, get back on the trail. I don't know if you could see that top up there of that mountain, all icy covered. I don't think it's snow, just ice covered. I was right below that. Uh, I don't know, probably down in that area right there. <laughs> so uh, that explains part of the reason why it was so cold last night. <laughs> Here's the shelter that I would have been coming towards last night with campsites around. I probably would have still set up my tent, but that was the one that I wasn't sure based on messages or comments and far out because it was closed last fall because of uh, bear activity getting into food. Uh, apparently it's open now. So I could have just kept on going last night, but hindsight's 2020. Who knows? It might have been just as windy here. Uh, obviously it's still cold here, but uh, the wind, never know if it would have been just as bad. I seemed to be in a weird saddle or something last night that just kind of had a vortex of wind. So I might have had more wind than some of these other areas, but whatever. Can't go back and undo the past. Don't regret anything. Just keep living life day by day. I don't always make the best decisions, but that was the best one for last night, in my opinion. And Ended up being I could have stayed there anyway, but it would have sucked if I came all this way and it was closed <laughs> because, well, I probably still would have tented there uh, anyway and uh, hopefully just not got kicked out or <laughs> because there's really nowhere else between where I stayed and here that had flat enough ground. So I'm glad I stayed where I stayed. I got good sleep in between <laughs> the shivering and the hit pain from the cold and the wind blowing through or waking me up with the noises. 
I uh, definitely heard a lot of trees cracking in the middle of the night. I never heard any fall though, so that's a good thing. And I felt safe being there because I didn't see any trees that were down, so I felt safe being there. Just way too cold with that wind for me last night. But it's over and we're going on. And I think it's about six miles to go to the intersection where Uncle Johnny's is. Uh, probably another six or seven hundred up and then Wow, I think it's almost 1,500 or 2,000 down from here uh, going into that section of town. Here's a cool view of Irwin, Tennessee from up high. Uh, just about a mile, mile and a half down still. I'm uh, gonna stop and eat some lunch there uh, before continuing on. You can see the cool mountains in the background and over here. And then down there is the uh, Nolichucky River. We should probably get a couple more views of that on the way down as well. But that is Irwin. Basically going back to where I was. Started off yesterday morning before going to uh, Sam's Gap. Uh, but at least that section is done and moving on here today. And figure out what I'm going to do with the upcoming weather uh, situation coming in. But uh, continuing on right now. Here's another great view of the river. The mountains in the background. Gorgeous. So did a little bit of thinking outside the box here for the second half of my day. Um, basically, I walked the 24, 25 miles from Sam's Gap back to Uncle Johnny's Hostel in Irwin. Still wanted to keep going, obviously. Nice day. Still chilly, but nice sunny day. Wanted to get as many miles in as possible because it is going to be a horrible day tomorrow. <laughs> A lot of rain, could be freezing rain, could be snow. Uh, so I wanted to sit that one out. Not that I'm worried about snow or anything, I just don't want to get soaking wet and then have those freezing temperatures with, you know, the high winds uh, that's, you know, forecasted for right now. Uh, so Steve from Unicoi Shuttle had a great idea because he had to come up this way anyway. He said, well, why don't I just drive you up to the next gap and then you can work your way backwards to Irwin because I'm going to stay in Irwin, you know, through that rain tomorrow to uh, avoid it and then get back on trail. So this way I still get my 10 miles extra in today. And, uh, you know, basically went 11 so far. it will be 10, 20, 21 miles for the day. Perfect day. Uh, not perfect day. I don't know why I said perfect, but a good day. Get those miles still in. Uh, just a weird way of having to do it, but... It works out well because I still get to do this section and then he will drive me back up here when I start again uh, after the rainfall. So it's be really nice. 
Uh, it's still going to be cold, but clear skies and everything. Uh, and it will be a couple really nice areas. Beauty Rest and uh, Unaka Mountain. Uh, so get some really good views there. Unaka is supposed to have like an enchanted forest type of look. And Beauty Rest is supposed to have some of the uh, best views around. So in this area. So looking forward to seeing those. Who knows, might even be some frosted trees with snow. Uh, but right now I'm going to continue on this way. Uh, going southbound basically through this 10 mile section. Uh, back to where I will be holding out the storm or holding out the big day of rain and freezing rain and cold, ice cold temperatures and wind. Uh, but I'm sure there'll be some awesome views here. Take a look at over the next uh, 10 miles or so. And uh, then another zero. I have a lot of miles going to be crunching out after I get back on trail uh, the day after tomorrow to make up for these two zeros that I've had to take uh, in the last few days. All right, carrying on. Oh my goodness. So I just stopped and took a layer off to put it in my backpack. <laughs> my backpack was wide open. So <laughs> Steve did not tell me <laughs> that my pack was open. He probably thought I was going to stop, you know, before I started climbing the hill and close it up. So it's not his fault. But I passed a group of four or five <laughs> day hikers. Every one of them saying, hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like saying hi, you know, happy and cordial and asking questions. <laughs> None of them told me my backpack was wide open. <laughs> Just like fly open. And then I went back and looked at the last video clip, and sure enough, it's there wide open. And none of you told me. <laughs> okay, hold it. I know this video is in the future, and you couldn't have told me. And maybe you was. Maybe you was there yelling at your video. Close your backpack, Fortune. <laughs> wow. I am so glad that I started feeling warm and wanted to take another layer off because. That would have been funny if I went the whole 10 miles with it wide open and never losing anything. I don't really want to try that, though. <laughs> uh, I got to admit, that's a first for me. I've never <laughs> started hiking with the top of my backpack wide open. And there's Irwin, Tennessee from the other side, on the other mountains, coming up to it from the other direction. Beautiful mountains all around. That's a cool view. 
all those pines and evergreens, and those mountains, beautiful. Just came down probably almost a mile, at least a half a mile of stuff like this. Just big pointed jagged rocks and roots. Man, you just cannot get any speed going when you're doing that. Uh, it's all right, not in a hurry. Just need to get back before the rain starts tomorrow. <laughs> I think I have plenty of time. Pretty steep here too. Uh, this is a little more open here. Still some jagged rocks and some roots. They <laughs> you have a stump right in the middle of the trail. Uh, a little jagged, but not too bad. Just can't go that three mile an hour <laughs> downhill. Well, some people might. I don't. I slow down a little bit for that stuff because knowing me, I'm going to trip over one and bang my head on another. <laughs> so I take it nice and easy. Nice and green in this area. Usually is though around the water. Getting ready to go back down about 50 feet of elevation and about 150 or so of descension. Uh, this this certain section here is different than a lot of it. Uh, just a lot of rocks, real rocky trail, and even the dirt is really dry in most places. Uh, a lot of roots where there's not rocks, sometimes there's both, and a lot of ridge walking. Uh, right now, uh, walking the ridge uh, right above the river here and uh, definitely rocky. And uh, the other thing about this part of the trail is there's a lot of water. So a lot of water crossings. Uh, you don't need much water, that's for sure, because you're gonna come across water every tenth of a mile, it seems like. Uh, but definitely slow going, just because there's so many rocks and uh, it's not like big rocks, you know, skipping <laughs> like, you, like you do across the water crossing or whatnot. A lot of pointed things and uh, of course, you have the ridge walking then at the, uh, well, beginning, if you're going northbound, southbound, uh, it's at the end. Um, really nice part of the trail, though. Beautiful in areas you see a lot of the mountains. Obviously gives you that other aspect coming in from the other side uh, of the, uh, of Irwin. Uh, so you get to see that as well. Uh, definitely some thinner parts of the trail here. A lot of roots make it uh, very narrow at times. Don't see that very much on the Appalachian. That's uh, definitely something you see a lot on the PCT, but not so much here. But uh, all in all, I'm heading back, or gonna be back soon, and uh, time to eat again. There's some Canadian geese, otherwise just known as geese in Canada. And this is the Nolichucky River, up close. The beautiful mountains in the background. Isn't it grand?